Hey everyone, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. Today we're looking at the production version of a prototype watch I reviewed a few months ago. Since then, a lot has changed in this production unit and I really like the improvements. So let's take a closer look at this new version. I originally jumped at the chance to review the prototype. At the time, I'd become slightly obsessed with Brad Pitt's watch featured in Quentin Tarantino's new film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This watch was featured in so many scenes, it's almost a star in its own right. The version in the film was, of course, the iconic Citizen Bullhead from the 60s and 70s. There was a lot of debate about this being in the film as the production dates of the watch didn't exactly line up with the film's timeline. But it didn't stop me from falling in love with it. The issue with these early Citizen ones is they're quite hard to find in good condition at a reasonable price, I think. A lot have redials, and for me, it just wasn't really worth the risk of finding one on eBay. Then came along the prototype, and this is really a love letter to those bullhead chronographs, but with modern internals. The prototype I really fell for and gave it a positive review. Dave the designer was also inspired by the Tarantino film and originally he became very interested with the Citizen 8110 bullhead. He ended up collecting four of them and was able to get one of them working with the parts from the remaining three. During this process he found several weaknesses in the design including leaks around the bezel, fractured subdial pins and general corrosion inside the watch due to poor sealing. He also saw scratches on the mineral crystal and a rather weak coating of the watch's iconic gold plating. He used these discoveries to really enhance his version. So now we see sapphire crystal to fix the scratch issues, a real tractor ring to read the tachymeter, PVD gold plating for better durability, and now a brushed and polished finish. He also has a unique set of red hands to fit the vintage muscle car feel. The resulting prototype went on to form the basis of a Kickstarter campaign. Now it is fair to say that Kickstarter didn't perform as well as it should have. So Dave went back to the drawing board and completely redesigned the watch based on a lot of feedback from the Kickstarter campaign and comments left on reviews like mine. I was honored to be asked by Dave on a few occasions my opinion as the watch was being redesigned and I was more than happy to help. The new version of is completely redesigned and the best one I have seen from Detroit Mint so far. A real evolution of the brand, I feel. So what are the key differences from the prototype? Well, there are many. It's really a complete redesign. Most notably, of course, the watches are now quartz-based as opposed to the prototype which featured a seagull powered chronograph movement. I think this is a wise choice, despite me having a passion for mechanical watches in general. Quartz for this type of watch, I think is perfect. Minimal maintenance needed, and an accuracy you wouldn't really get from that seagull movement. But the clear advantage here is the ability to keep the watch at a very affordable $225. A mechanical version would increase that cost at least double or triple and catapult the watch into the extremely competitive $750 to $1,000 price range. So what do you get for your $225 and does this watch represent value for money? It's common knowledge that I'm no fan of the most famous Detroit watch company. For me, in my view, they don't offer value for money at all. This watch, however, has everything you would expect from a watch in this price range and more. Domed sapphire crystal, all stainless steel construction, and it comes with a highly accurate and reliable Citizen Miyota quartz chronograph movement. So again, a nod back to Citizen and thanking them for their original bullhead. The watch features a 40 millimeter case from the nine to the three o'clock position. It has a very wearable 46 millimeter from lug to lug, and 13 millimeters thick, making it slim for this design. The choice of finishing here has something for everyone. Of course, the iconic gold of the film watch is available in both brushed and polished finishings. I was certain I would love the polished gold the most, 
but for me, the brush effect really appeals. One thing I would say about the dial, however, is it's a slightly richer color than the case. This is harder to see in photos, I think. Whilst we're looking at the dial, we have a lot going on here, but there is no question Dave has nailed the vintage dial look. The dial has a gentle sunburst radial effect to the finish with sharp printing and applied indices. The subdials are in black and feature running seconds. All the chronograph related hands are in a striking red and are highly visible, especially on the silver dial version. The loom is good actually. There is more applied here than in most chronographs I've reviewed, especially of course the iconic Omega Speedmaster. It's not like Seiko loom, where it's that bright, it's gonna temporarily burn into your retina when you stare at it in the dark, but it is decent enough. Interestingly, the tachymeter is on the rehull of the watch, not incorporated into the dial itself or on a separate bezel. Now the original Citizen ones had this printed on a separate ring around the edge of the dial. One thing that is new, and I love this, is the changing of the Detroit Mint font. The original font used on Detroit Mint watches was very distinctive, and like most distinctive things, it did divide opinion. My view, there is no way that the font, no matter how iconic to the Detroit Mint brand, would have really worked on this dial watch. The new font choice speaks of vintage design, and it looks great on the dial. My only improvement would have been to add the date. It would have totally thrown off the gorgeous symmetry of the dial, but I'm just a real sucker for the date on a watch. The hands are very well designed and really fit the overall look of the watch. In fact, some of the best hands I've reviewed on a watch recently. The case back features an engraving of a Ford Fastback Mustang and is perfectly in keeping with the inspiration of the watch's design. And the 20 millimeter lugs I mean, you can easily put this on a NATO if you wanted to take it to the pool, and it has a 100 meter water resistance, so it's gonna cover you for any situation. The cases are available in either a polished or brushing, and are very well executed. The brushing is deep. In fact, it's so deep, you can almost see the machining marks. This makes it look like a performance engine part, perfectly in keeping with the racing-inspired design. The case also features a flatter top, a design cue from the original Citizen, but again, it doesn't look as brutal as the original Citizen one did, although the original Citizen did look more like an actual bull's head, the way it was designed. To match, the pushers are either brushed or polished, and give a satisfying snap action despite it being a quartz movement. The hands line up nicely, which I know is an issue for some quartz watches I have reviewed in the past. The crown has an almost industrial look to it, with the Detroit Mint D logo deeply engraved on the top. This is very reminiscent from the other Top Crown vintage watches, an improvement over the vintage version of the Citizen watch, which just featured an ordinary watch crown at the top. Included is a custom handmade leather strap with stitching to match the design. This strap is surprisingly comfortable, but I can't imagine this watch on anything other than the iconic bun strap from the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood film. This is now nicknamed the Cliff Booth strap, and I feel very strongly about this. In fact, I feel so strongly about it, I had one specially made from my favorite strap maker, Mercola at Man Cave Leather, for when I reviewed the prototype. I'm glad Dave took my nagging and now he's producing his own version. This is an additional cost, but well worth it. I think it's around the $39 mark. There is no question for me after seeing them both that the oil brown leather is the way to go, regardless of your choice of watch head. So a big thanks to Dave for sending me these watches in for review. Getting to see the prototype and now this production unit has been really cool, actually. So here's my review of the watch, but it doesn't matter what I think, it matters what you guys think. So let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I appreciate all the comments you leave me. If you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate if you hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. And if you're interested in longer form content, we have an audio only podcast called Casual Watch Talk available on all of your favorite podcasting apps. I do appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch Review channel. Thanks guys, bye.